Fête des Tuileries is an annual summer fair in Paris, France. This is located in the heart of the city, and the tallest rides offer some stunning views of nearby landmarks like the Eiffel Tower. In this video, I will provide an overview of this event and explain if it's worth going to. This fair started nearly 20 years ago, and it has evolved into the second highest attended fair in all of France. It now attracts over 3 million visitors per year. For reference, it has more people in the annual attendance of all but six theme parks in all of Europe. And this fair only runs for two months of the year in July and August. It does have extremely long hours though, as it typically runs from 11 a.m. all the way until midnight or 1 a.m. daily. The secret to this fair's success is the location. It is in an area with multiple metro stations nearby and very high foot traffic. It is adjacent to the Tuileries Garden and it's within walking distance of places like Place de la Concorde and the Louvre. I suspect a lot of people may not specifically seek this fair out. Rather, people see the fair because it's impossible to miss and then they walk in. And there are multiple entrances and exits on every side of the carnival. And as with many fairs, admission is completely free. So there is no commitment to enter. People can pop in to grab a quick bite to eat and maybe ride just one or two things. The fair itself also feeds on the location to maximize the guest experience. The tallest rides offer some spectacular views of the city. There is something inherently cool being on a random flat ride and then seeing the Eiffel Tower in the distance. And then you have those beautiful gardens and ornate buildings nearby that give the carnival a classy backdrop. It beats the parking lot to usually see at US carnivals. Now, this location does levy some strict noise ordinances on the fair though. As a result, you don't have any music playing. It's kind of weird to have that at a carnival. Guests are also told not to scream on some rides. And as an extreme measure, Booster Max actually places these plastic scream shields around riders as a noise dampener. The Midways thankfully have the usually vibrant visual energy at least of a European funfair. What do I mean by that? Unlike US carnivals where a single showman provides all the rides at a fair, European carnivals have independent showmen bringing their own specific ride to the event. So the rides are all in competition with each other to attract the most guests. This has several impacts in the guest experience, most of which are good. Rides have flashy lighting packages and eye-catching backdrops. This is to draw you in. Rides also run really long cycles so guests get the best bang for their buck, enticing people to re-ride and attract new riders from the midway and the employees will load things very quickly. It directly profits them to maximize the throughputs of their individual ride. I was worried this fair would have some lengthy queues given the attendance figures, but most rides were complete walk-ons for me, and this was even me visiting on a weekend. The one con for guests is that there is no pay one price or unlimited wristband option. You need to pay per ride, so this can add up if you want to ride a lot of things. Cost varied mightily by attraction. Most cost 5 to 6 euros, if I remember correctly, but some of the larger rides did cost more. Booster Max was the most expensive one I saw at a whopping 15 euros per person. I always bring cash to these European fun fairs. While some rides and vendors may accept card, many are cash only. Now let's talk about what this fair has in terms of rides. The rides here do not have much space available. This is arguably the narrowest fair I have ever visited. The midway is extremely narrow and consists of just a single pathway down the middle. So while you won't find any large coasters here, the fair does pack in a handful of rides. The highlights have to be the flat rides. I found the rides at German fun fairs tend to be faster and more forceful, but this fair still had a decent lineup. The exact rides can vary year to year, but there have been some mainstays over the past few years. The most notable attraction has to be Booster Max. This ride flings guests nearly 60 meters or 200 feet into the air. This ride is a long cycle in both directions. The gondola would consistently flip over the top and then hit riders with solid positive G's coming down. The one con with this ride is that the scream shields did take away that wind in your face sensation that always makes a thrill ride better, but I could still appreciate that stunning view at least. Now if good views are what you're after, the Grand Rue de Paris is a gigantic observation wheel offering stunning 360 degree views. You also get nice views from the Air Swing Star Flyer, and also from the rare Huss Rainbow. I think the most theatric flat ride here has to be Happy Sailor. 
This is a Himalaya-style attraction with all sorts of lights and screen effects. This ride embodies everything a European funfair does to make their rides more appealing. Then kids will find a collection of smaller flats scattered about the fair. There is also a kiddie coaster in Palm. This is a basic wacky worm, and if you want the credit, yes, adults can ride it. There also are a handful of fun houses. Most are good and span multiple levels and have all sorts of obstacles. Then I could not help but chuckle at this bouncy house named Maison de Mickey, considering how close this place is to Disneyland Paris. I guarantee you they did not get permission to have those characters on the side. I encountered one dark ride here in Train Phantom A, but I was advised not to ride it from others who said it was short and lackluster, despite the flashy facade. The final ride of note here is a portable log flume in Conga that has two fine drops and a different layout than usual for most traveling flumes. One word of warning I'll give you with the rides here is to be careful and use common sense. I saw some things here that would never be permitted in the United States. Guests need to check their own restraints on multiple rides. On Rainbow, we saw the employees allow a toddler to ride in the lap of their parents. Then there were multiple rides where people are openly standing up and the operators did not care. Then in past years, this fair is at a stand-up swinging ship. You stand in a cage and get some downright terrifying airtime because there are no real restraints. You need to be careful not to land wrong. Beyond the rides, this fair also has a wide range of games and food offerings. While I did not try any of the games, we did sample some of the snacks. None of them wowed us, as we found much better food at different bakeries and restaurants in Paris, but that probably makes sense. So, do I recommend this fair? If you're in the area, sure. I think it's worth walking down the midway to take in the atmosphere, and then you can take a spin or two in a ride if one catches your eye. But I don't think this fair is one worth going out of your way for. It does not have any of the large portable coasters Europe is known for, and while there are a few notable flat rides here, none were as crazy as what I've encountered on the German fair circuit. This is the only French fair I've been to at this point, so I can't really compare it to the others in the country. It definitely beats your average fare in the United States, though. That being said, if that stand-up swinging ship returns in future years and I'm in the area, I would definitely seek this place out because I'm morbidly curious how that ride would feel, and I know that's an extremely rare experience. But at most, I would spend maybe an hour there after seeing the nearby landmarks. So those are my thoughts on Fête des Tuileries, the summer fun fair in Paris, France. What are your thoughts about this carnival? Let me know how it compares to the other fairs you've been to, whether they're in France, other European countries, or the United States. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.